Paul is writing to the church in Ephesus, and he says, I want you to get out there and walk. Better yet, run on the road that God has called you to travel. I don't want any of you sitting around on your hands. I don't want anyone strolling off down some path that goes nowhere. And mark that you do this with humility and discipline. Not in fits and starts, but steadily pouring yourself out for each other in acts of love. Alert at noticing differences and quick at mending fences. You are all called to travel the same road in the same direction, so stay together both outwardly and inwardly. You have one master, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who rules over all and works through all and is present in all. Everything you are and think and do is permeated with oneness. But that doesn't mean you should all look and speak and act the same. It's out of generosity of Christ. He gives us, each of us has been given his own gift. The text for this is, he climbed up the high mountain and captured the enemy and seized the booty and handed it out and gifts to the people. It's true, is it not, that the one who climbed up is also, also climbed down, down to the very valley of earth. And the one who climbed down is the one who climbed back up, up to highest heaven. And he handed out gifts above and below, filled the heavens with his gifts, filled the earth with his gifts. He handed out the gifts of apostle, ap prophet, evangelist, and pastor teacher to train Christians in skilled servant work, working within Christ's body, the church, until we are all moving rhythmically and easily with each other, efficient and graceful in, responses, in response to God's Son, fully mature adults, fully developed within and without, fully alive like Christ. No prolonged infancies, please. We'll not tolerate babes in the woods, small children who are an easy mark for imposters. God wants us to grow up, to know the whole truth and to tell it in love, like Christ in everything. We take our lead from Christ, who is the source of everything we do. He keeps us in step with each other. His very breath and blood flow through us, nourishing us so that we will grow up healthy in God, robust in love. So And so I insist, and God backs me up on this, that there's no going along with the crowd, the empty-headed, mindless crowd. They refused for so long to deal with God that they lost touch not only with God, but with reality itself. They can't think straight anymore. <coughs> Feeling no pain, they let themselves go into sexual obsession, addicted to every sort of perversion. But that's no life for you. You learned Christ. My assumption is that you paid careful attention to him, been well instructed with his, in, in the truth, precisely as we have seen it in Jesus. Since then, we do not have an excuse of ignorance. Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. Get rid of it. And then take on an entirely new way of life, a God-fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. This is what it adds up to then. No more lies, no more pretense. Tell your neighbor the truth. In Christ's body, we're all connected to each other after all. When you lie to, to others, you end up lying to yourself. Go ahead and be angry. You do well to be angry, but don't use your anger to fuel revenge. And don't stay angry. Don't go to bed angry. Don't give the devil that kind of foothold in your life. Did you used to make ends meet by stealing? Well, no more. Get an honest job so that you can help others who can't work. Watch the way you talk. Let nothing foul or dirty come out from your mouth. Say only what is helps. Each word is a gift. Don't grieve God. Don't break his heart. His Holy Spirit moving and breathing in you is the most intimate part of your life, making you fit for himself. Don't take such a gift for granted. Make a clean break of all cutting, backbiting, profane talk. Be gentle with one another, sensitive. Forgive one another as quickly and as thoroughly as God in Christ forgave you. Watch what God does and then do it. Like children who learn proper behavior from their parents, mostly what God does is love you. Keep company with him and learn to live a life of love. Observe how Christ lived. His love was not cautious but extravagant. He didn't love in order to get something from us but to give everything of himself to us. Love like that. We've been spending a lot of time talking about the kingdom of God, and, and I hope that it's come up, but if it's not, today is the day we make it aware. You know, in this kingdom, we need to understand that we belong to each other. We need each other. 
We need to live out love. Community is tough if your idea of community is coming together to see the back of somebody's head for one hour a week. But if you're here today, it's because you've experienced or you've, you're intuitively aware that when you risk sharing your life with somebody else, when you risk sharing your hurts, when you risk sharing your joys, there's a huge payoff. There's something that can't be measured. It's something that we are truly family. It's not an easy thing to do. It's tough. It's dangerous. It's risky. It's not comfortable. But it's worth it. It's worth it to take the time to walk with each other and to listen to each other and to hear what God says to you, to me, from you to me, and from me to you, and from them to us. If you're here just to get the message, I can give you 20 better speakers than me online that are better. <laughs> I listen to them, so they're, you know, they're good. You can get it through them. But if you're here, you need to know that, that like, we mature together. We encourage together. We get encouraged together. We get our meaning together. It, you and I need to live out love. God is doing something interesting when we meet together. And what we just read, watch what God's doing and follow it. Like, we got to pay attention to this. <coughs> a couple of weeks ago, we met on a Wednesday night at Keith and Noreen's. And we didn't know what to call it. We just kind of, we were going to have supper and talk about God and sing a little and see what happened. And, and... We were intentional. We had we came together. We had a we had a meal. We shared a meal. Everyone brought something. And around the tables, Justin was good at keeping it and keeping us intentional. Let's talk about God. Share your God stories with each other. And then we got together and we sang a couple of songs. And I don't know how to describe it except there were more voices there than people there. It was it got it was it, it was good. It was very good. And then we practice what we're going to practice next week here where we talked a little bit about prophecy and then had some people sit on the hot seats and we just blessed them with what God was telling us and that was good. It was good. Last week Keith asked me when we gathered for prayer, he said, why, why do you think that that happened? Like why, why was it so good when we were singing? <laughs> and I didn't really have an answer. But I've been thinking about it and I think I've got a hypothesis that I want to test. What if when we, if we open up to each other about God, what if we actually open up to God? What if we risk sharing what God is speaking to us with others? I mean, it's kind of what the Bible says, right? If, uh, Philemon 1.6, I pray you may be active in sharing your faith, that you have a full understanding of every good thing that you have in Christ Jesus. There, that there's something like if, when we share our faith, even if we hear, like it, it, it's not that we need to evangelize the world as much as we need to be risky enough to share it with a fellow Christian. The evangelizing of the world comes after. Uh, in, in Revelation, it says that, that, that the saints overcame by the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. It says earlier in, in Revelation that, that the, 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 the testimony of Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And, and, and when somebody, somebody, it just took one person around the table to share their, 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 their journey, and everyone else wanted to share too, because we, we saw, we saw. So we're going to put the hypothesis to a test. The hypothesis is, what, is, what if we open up to each other about God? Does that open us up to God? Two things we're going to do. I mentioned in the announcements, we're, it's, it's, we're doing the same thing again. And it's going to be a Keith and Noreen's. And we don't want to burn them out, so it's going to be twice a, twice a month. And our prayer time and our conversation cafe, we're just doing together when we gather at Keith and Noreen's house. So we're not filling up the schedule. If, if you've been attending either of those, come to the time, it's come to the, the family feast, we're calling. We're going to come. 
if, if uh, kids are welcome to come, but here, understand this, kids need to participate in this. They're not there as observers, they're not there to get child care, they're not there to, to be put off in a corner. What we're doing is it's, it's uh, food, faith, father, fun. Simple to remember, food, food, faith, father, fun. You know, food, we eat together. We bring our meal together and we, we share. Food is important, there's a whole theology behind it, we'll get into that later. Faith is we are telling each other our God stories. What has God done this week? What has he done in my past? What, what, is, what, you know, what has he woken me up to? Kids of any age can eat. Kids of any age can share. And even if they can't share, they can listen and learn. That we're supposed to be teaching our children about God. The best way they can learn is when they hear our God stories. Um, the, the, the Father, it's, it's, we want to spend time worshiping God. We want to focus on Him. And, and remember when little Bennett was just learning to walk? He was the one dancing up and down the aisles. You don't need to have much of it. Like, kids, kids can do this. Kids are made to worship God. And then the fun part is whatever God wants to do. So our discussion around the table may focus on a topic that we want to explore in the Word. Maybe someone has read some, a devotional that they feel they want to share at that time. Maybe someone needs encouragement, so we'll, we'll encourage them in prayer or maybe prophecy. Well, next week, you guys, you're going to learn and get activated in this. And it's just a fun, safe place to, to, to operate. Whatever is going to happen, oh, you know, it's just, it's, it's, it's going to be fun because God's going to do what he wants to do. I think it's going to outgrow Keith and Maureen's pretty quick. So I've already, there's a couple of people already said, we can have one in our house, we can do one in our house. And I don't know if we're going to just move from house to house, or if we grow too quick, we just have to multiply and get it going. <laughs> But it's going to have the same. We need. It's going to be food, faith, father, and fun. I'm excited by it. We start this week. Come out on Wednesday. Bring your friends. You can bring your non-Christian friends. Like they can sit around and if the faith stories, let them listen. Let them listen. That's how faith comes by hearing. The second thing. That if you were at the meeting on, on uh, Monday when we talked about this, you're, you're already aware of. I've been looking for a way to turn what we do Sunday morning from a monologue into a dialogue. Uh, you know, the whole, this has been the best way to communicate for 1,500 years, is to have people sit down and have one person up front talking. It, it's still the best way to communicate. It's not the best way to learn. And it's interesting to me that for 1,500 years, that's about the exact time the church became moved from an organism to an to a institution. Um, I'm just saying. There's something about people being able to use their gifts with each other, use their talent, show their love, hear their stories of others, and respond with, with, with what God has, is birthing in you to share. Um, Sunday morning, we're just going to, the same elements, we'll just flip it around a bit. It'll be food, faith, fun, and father. So what do I mean by that? After the message, we'll break up into small groups, and you'll get to see who you're talking with today. Then you're going to go get the snacks and the coffee and then come back. It's not a conversation back there. We come here in the groups for the conversation. Then there's going to be three or four questions that you can talk about, and, and, and it'll be based on what the message is and how you're going to apply it in your life, and then how can we pray for each other. It, it really comes down to we're making space for what it says in um, 1 Corinthians uh, verse 26 of chapter 14. This is from the message again. It says, so here's what I want you to do. When you gather for worship, each one of you should be prepared with something that will be useful for all. Sing a hymn, teach a lesson, tell a story, lead a prayer, provide an insight. That's all we're doing is we, we turn it into a conversation. It's, it's, we're enabling you to do the work that God has created for you to do. <laughs> it's, 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 I gotta say, like we, we, I, I really appreciated learning about Kevin's mom at, at her funeral. And, and as I heard her story, it saddened me because I wish I would have known her as a person. You know, like I love hearing people's stories. And what that awoke in me is, is uh, like I love hearing people's stories. 
And when we first came to the church, I wanted to hear as many of your stories as I could. And some of you, I would just get bits and pieces and bits and pieces, and I haven't been able to sit down and pick you down to hear your whole story. But that's coming, because I love hearing stories. I love, I love hearing how God's worked in your life. I love hearing what, what you've been taught and what, what's important to you. And I, I just, that's, that's, I love that. You guys are amazing people. You got more to share than just sitting there and, okay, smile and nod once in a while. And, you know, if you really want an amen, man, I'm okay with amens. They're, they're okay, but I don't have to. <laughs> <laughs> I did, I did uh, have a friend invent an app for me so I could have my own soundtracks. And <laughs> oh, that's a good point. Oh, amen. Oh, amen. Do it all. I haven't brought it out here because I didn't want to you know, pressure you in any way. So two opportunities, family feasts during the week. I don't know where God's going to take it. I mean, it could, it could explode. But I do know everyone who comes and makes the effort. You're making an effort to come somewhere and bring something to share. When you do that, something opens up spiritually and you will get to receive a whole lot more. When you come and, and you're, you're, you, you, yeah, make that effort. Make that effort. It's as simple as bringing a dish for, for a meal and then, okay, I'm gonna share a bit of my story. And it doesn't, please don't think that you have to have your story all together and I've learned something great from God. It's like, here's my, here's my struggle. What's going on? Because that's why we're together. Because that's, that's how we can encourage you. And, and, oh, anyway, it's going to be good. When we meet together, don't worry, we're not, uh, we might start today. I'm still working on it. But we'll, we'll give you a chance to kind of work into that, doing Sunday service together instead of just the way everyone else in the world does it. I understand that's a huge step for people. Do we want to follow the crowd that does the same thing around the world? You know, it just, it's the same thing. It's because it's the best way to communicate. It's the best way, it's the worst way to learn, best way to communicate. Um, and really what, what we're coming against too is this, this idea that's not, it's, it's, it's around the North American church that we come together so I can worship God alone. You know, I, I come come together, oh, I enjoyed the worship this morning. I enjoyed the music. Oh, I enjoyed that message. It's because it's me and God. We gotta rip that out of our vocabulary and rip that out of what we're doing because it's, okay, what have you come to give? How have you encouraged someone else? It's good when God shows up and it's, it's, you're, you're praying for someone and you see that miracle take place right there. That's what's going to happen. When you, when you hear that need and you start to pray, you're going to see answers come. And, and you're going to know it's, it's God working through you. I didn't do that and that's just fun. You're going to get words that, that come into your head that you don't understand what they are, but you're going to risk in faith and, and speak it out and you're going to totally bless the person that you're ministering to. Because that's God's heart to minister through you, to partner with you. It's going to be fun. We belong to each other. We need each other. We need to live out love. So my question for you today, what I've said, it could terrify you. It could scare you. It doesn't, like, what are you going to do to live out love? What are you going to do in the day-to-day -day of every day to show people that they matter to you, to show people that we belong to each other? Some of you are absolutely great at making phone calls when you, you, you miss someone in church. Go for it. Go for it. God puts someone on your heart and you haven't seen them for a while, contact them and let them know you're praying for them. First pray for them, really, and then let them know that you're praying for them. Okay, we're going we're gonna to risk something here. I want us to try something here this morning. You can't talk about community, talk about community, talk about community, and then, and then 
Oh, I gotta read one more portion that'll convict you. And then we'll talk about community. Yeah, okay, let me read the one portion. Okay. This is from Romans chapter 12. And this is, again, in the message. Paul tells the church in Rome to love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold to dear life for good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourself fueled in a flame. Be alert servants of the master, cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians. Be invented in hospitality. Bless your enemies. No cursing under your breath. Laugh with your happy friends when they're happy. Share tears with when they're down. Get along with each other. Don't be stuck up. Make friends with nobodies. Don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even, for that's not what you'll do. I'll do the judging, God says. I'll take care of it. Our scripture tells us if your enemy is hungry, go buy him a, that person lunch. Or if he's thirsty, get him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you, but get the best of evil by doing good. That's how we're to love each other. That's how we're to show each other love. And I'm just curious what would happen this morning is if we, we, we broke from the way we normally do things for communion. What if we actually uh, tried getting together in small groups and talk about a few things, talk about the blood, talk about the body, Maybe talk about how can I examine myself? What if we allowed ourselves in that time to teach each other? What if we allowed ourselves in that time to bless each other? What if we allowed ourselves in that time to pray for each other? Okay, I'm excited about it.